Good morning. I'll ask your attention for science, particularly for plant science. And I want to stress that this GM technology that we developed in Ghent, that it's really a technology we need. It. So it's a myth that is propagated that we can do without. It's where, can ask where is our world going if you see the pollution that's accumulating, if you see all these landscapes that are slowly, slowly deteriorating with the increasing population. Uh, we want to know how to save this. And we see more and more that cities take over, that this landscape disappear. Oh, it doesn't seem to work. OK, it works. Unfortunately, that's how it, things going. And then, will it all collapse? It's our task to see how science can handle this matter. It's not easy. Uh, population grows and grows. We are, in 1945, we were 2 billion. 100 years later, we will be 10 billion. People feel the deteriorations that go on. We try to unite, we demonstrate. Uh, United Nations with the Millennium Goals said what should be done, but didn't work always. Uh, some year, two years ago, in, when it was Rio plus 20, uh, the United Nations again tried to say that's the way we have to go, but people, hundred thousands of, uh, of people demonstrated that it's not possible to go on. And luckily, United Nations and the government of Brazil took over the slogans that we still have absolutely uh, to see in front of us. It's fight hunger, fight poverty, save the planet. Yes, we all want it. So we should be, have the solidarity to do, do it together. But how to do it? Then it com immediately seems to go astray. What are the acts of poverty? Of course, we need absolutely that the public uh, governance is accountable. It's a prerequisite to, uh, before the private will follow. So we have to organize. We abolish slavery, but there are still enormous differences in, for gender. And I can, if you see agriculture in Africa, you know still that slavery is around. We know all the injustice. We see it daily on our television. But we want to see the help. And we see that many of these eight pro, uh, projects and the help that we do doesn't change the conditions of the people. It's just some industry that takes advantage of it. We, we know that it is essential to have uh, peace and security. But what we don't know, and that we don't realize enough, is that is science that we need, science and technology. And in agriculture, when, we, when there are about 2.5 2 billion people that are in agriculture, that we see that for three persons, one is busy in agriculture in the developing countries. In our luxurious world, it's one on 120 or 150. But if we see the conditions of living and that this agriculture is, well, slowly, slowly progressing, uh, but that meanwhile people leaving agriculture, gathering in the cities where they need for food and all the, the production uh, is consumed, is growing and growing, if we see uh, all the dramas that are coming if we don't have the right food supply and if our agriculture, the way we have done it till now, is really very polluting, is really damaging our environment. And the farmers that do the traditional agriculture cannot make a, a living on that because that's the way we have organized our agriculture. Then science and technology has to come in. But in our laboratories, we are on the right side. We find the pathways uh, of the 
of the plant science, the, of the biochemical steps. We know the molecular biology, but we forget often the left part, really what nature is, and how the ecology goes, and how this nature interacts. So we have all together, all types of scientists have to see all the techniques, the observations that we did, and get ahead and work with the science. Because the challenges with the climate uh, instability is enormous. And the victims that are there, we see it regularly. But we, in our rich world, we should aware what is going on and how can we go in a safe way to do uh, novel plants that can take up the challenges we have. We need to have the traits for uh, plants that can stand drought, that can stand diseases, that have a higher yield. Because if the population uh, goes from 2 billion to 10 billion, I can assure you we need an uh, enormous increase in food, and especially since we are not still in a world where half of the world lives on $2 a day. And at the same time, we know as a scientist that in the laboratory, we can make healthier food. We can make a lot of chemicals that we have to take, medicines we have to develop. We can produce it in a cheaper way in plants. So that's our task, that it goes. But it's very complicated to do that. We have to realize that it is a, an agriculture is an enormous economic system. At the left side, there is the technologies. That's what the scientists do in the laboratory. You see the flowers, you see the cells. We can discover the genes that were these traits. And now the GM technology is in the laboratory bringing the novel genes we need because the crosses, it's too slow. We will never be able to make the plants we need if we do not this GM technology. But if we have these plants and in the laboratory, then we have to try it out in the field. And society has to accept that we tried out this in the field because there is not, never any danger seen about that. And, but then we have to organize our agriculture. We have to organize the trade. And that is often very unjust. We give, you know it, in Europe, enormous subsidies to our agriculture, to our industrial agriculture, to our, uh, agriculture where there is a limited number of seed companies, and that's very damaging for the developing world. We have to see how can we organize trade and uh, how can we organize protection of the, uh, in, that goes for the farmers themselves in the developing countries. We can only progress science if we use this intellectual property and the protection of the varieties, but how to do it in a fair way, that's a very fascinating and important society problem. And for that we have to fight, not against the science and against the technology. That is what's going on. Because if you take a GM corn and a non-GM corn, what is the difference? None. There is absolutely the same. Because we still are in the old beliefs that a genome is something stable, something static. No. It's for 10,000 years we have done plant improvement. And now that we can analyze what we have we done in these 10,000 years, enormous amount of sequences have been transplanted, changed, exchanged, and never anything dangerous happened. And since the 30 years we do GM technology, nothing dangerous has happened. Neither for health from humans and animals, nor for the environment. And the technology with which we do introducing genes in plants, that's a technology that's for hundred and million years is used by inserting from bacteria genes in plants and make in that way novel traits around. It's the basis of evolution. Uh, all the steps from the three billion years ago when we were uh, only unicellulars on, on this planet to all the varieties that have evolved one of, out of the other and all the biology that went on, that is 
a change of, of genes. The whole world is an enormous genetic laboratory, and it's a myth, and that we absolutely had to make naked that GM are dangerous or that GM is unnatural. It's the basis of nature, the GM technology. And all, people say, yes, but in your laboratory, you don't make anything interesting. Well, that's because society has blocked the GM technology. If you see, out of these genes, we first making uh, plants that could grow uh, uh, without destroying the soil, no need for plowing, uh, um, so that we could have a, a, an agriculture that use less water and less uh, uh, than less uh, chemicals uh, for plant protection. We did it uh, with natural genes that we found in, in, in other bacteria, the Bacillus thuringiensis. We found uh, ways for gene engineering to make plants that can better uptake phosphate, that can take phosphite, that's less damaging for the environment. We could have more nutrient plants. All this is going on in the laboratories but we have to have it urgently in the society. Because if we make rice that has more vitamin A or, or more folate, we have now millions of people who die every year because they lack this. And, this, and destroying fields of the golden rice, that is really criminal. Because that's the war that's going on against the poor, against the ones that necessitate it. And everybody is misled by this GM. The famous Nature uh, uh, Journal says, yes, but this GM technology should not be the privilege of the multinationals. It should go to the people. Yes, it has to go, but where is the block? Particularly here in Europe, with our regulations, we stop this development. The GM technology is much too expensive, much too much overregulated before it can reach the people. And that is what we have to explain. And we, you must all feel it if you think a moment. In Europe, there is one GM corn variety that is allowed to grow now. It grows in limited amounts in Spain, Portugal, Czech, and so on. We are importing 46 varieties. If this EFSA has said that they are safe for using, if they were dangerous, surely we would not import it. But they are essential for, uh, uh, for the husbandry, for uh, animal feeding, and they are in the future will be uh, essential for many parts in the world that we need it. So we have to realize that in the world, it's a complex interaction, all of us. The scientists in the laboratory, we do the discoveries. But the discoveries that our society helps to, to make understanding of nature, understanding of science, has to have applications. And at that moment, the only ex economic system we found is that a private industry makes this and we have to see that these new inventions can go. And at the moment, it's too expensive to do, through the overregulations. We don't have the subsidies, and the, the financial world doesn't subsidize these uh, new uh, varieties. Why? Because in society, we are not clear. We don't tell the truth about science and about the GM technology. And that's the task of us all to do it because we have to realize that we are back in the beginning of science. If you see what happened to Galileo when he said, the earth is not the center, it's the sun. We are turning around the sun. He, was, he had to shut up, he was not allowed to talk. And in the, then uh, came the enlightenment period. Science was uh, booming, but as soon as Darwin said evolution, Nobody accepted it. Uh, in the States, more than half of the population still thinks about creationism. When the industry, uh, through science and technology, made the machines that makes that we have live here in a rich world, and 
urgently we should do that for the rest of the world. But at that moment, in the beginning of the machines, there was a movement, the Luddites, to destroy the machines. We say, craftsmanship is so beautiful, uh, we want the old traditions to go on. But the overpopulation says we cannot do it anymore. In, even in medicine at the moment, people don't believe in vaccination. Well, some of us don't believe in it. And if it's some person, it is not dangerous. But if you would stop vaccination, polio come back, all the diseases, the pest, all what we have seen before uh, would come back. So it's our task to see what is science. I'm convinced that in this century, for the GM plants will be everywhere. And that by that, it will be in a better environment. But it is important that you, the youth, because I'm 80, I can say what, uh, what we have experienced in the evolution of this molecular biology. But it's your task to know what is science, what is the scientific methods. It's a permanent questioning. We don't say we have the truth, we listen. And, but at the moment, see, till now, that's what we have to do. And of course, myth and uh, all these fantasies that some people tell about GM, it's nice, but we have to realize that it is nice for artistic means, for way of living, for what we as scientists call our neurobiology but for the reality of the science, the reality of our external world, especially if we want to see our planet as it was with its natures, with this diversity of plants, with this diversity of animals. And if we want at the same time have a pleasant aspects of that, but able to survive and not need slavery and not need people exploiting for having that, then I can assure you, you need science. And think about science, and talk about science, and follow the scientific methods. And then there is a hope that with the human invent, uh, capacity of invention, that we will be fast enough to go not straight into the wall, but it is close to midnight. Take the, up this responsibility when you hear people telling against GMs. Thank you. <laughs>